Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me again. Caleb here with you for episode one of Knife Showcase. I am a professional knife maker. That is my primary means of income, my primary living, my full-time job, what I do, and it's my passion every day. So I thought it only appropriate to start sharing more specific breakdowns of my work here on this platform versus what I usually do in outreach to my to my customers through like Instagram, email marketing, my website, that kind of thing. Um, this is a big platform, might as well use it, right? So I wanted to introduce a new series where I'm going to be showcasing the individual knives I offer in my catalog and my theories, thoughts, and um, experiences behind them and in the knife community in general. It may help some of you out there that are trying to be new or new to the knife making uh, genre trying to become knife makers, I'm going to start feeding some content into that specifically, especially for those of you who may want to do it full time. Um, it is a possible career field choice, very valid career field choice. It is not easy to do. But the key to all of that is your knives. What kind of knives you make and how you make them, what they look like. As a designer, I love designing new knives. I love coming out with new stuff. So for episode one, let's talk about my newest model for this year that I just finished this week, Warbird. All right, real quick breakdown. The Warbird to me is a combat knife, a utility field knife, a fighting knife. It can be all of those things and fill that role very nicely. What is a combat knife though? Well, aside from the Hollywood theatrics and tactical, you know, tactical aid stuff out there going, a combat knife to me is something that is robust, larger in size, and could fill a role in a combat or hostile duty situation, duty knife, let's call it a duty knife, where you may need a tool for self-defense, um, heavy duty use in, in rugged environments, that kind of thing. And it kind of is a crossover with a fighting knife to me. A fighting knife being something with kind of a longer, thinner blade, stout, designed for puncturing, that kind of thing. I've been looking for my own design for years. I've gone through several iterations um, it's largely been driven by my experiences in the military. I was in the military for 10 years and outside of the Rambo crowd, um, most people will never find themselves in a situation that they actually need a knife for fighting with. All right. This is a di different kind of war we fight these days. So when I say fighting knife, it's a genre, it's a, an aesthetic, it's a category, but not necessarily a practice for most people. Of all the people in the military that actually practice combative knife skills, of which my career field was very minimal, um, but we used knives regularly in what I did just for our daily tasks and stuff like that. I always had a knife on me. Bayonet. The bayonets are way too big. I worked my way through that real quick, that phase, the Rambo phase when I first went in and I'm all geared up and gucci up and ready to go and uh, guns and grit and blood and glory. Then you realize, man, these bayonets really are useless. Um, so my knives started to shrink over time. My knife um, desire or use started to shrink. And I was like, well, I really don't need all that big of a blade. I just need something a little more functional. I ended up with an EK Commando um, as one of my primary knives throughout my time in. I used it for a lot of things. I'll try to post some photos here. I used it for um, early warning device and placement, setting snares and trip flares and, you know, doing that kind of stuff. So it was a good general use knife that could fulfill the combat role. Um, if I needed to ever go toe to toe with the bad guy and do the ninja stuff, which is very rare. Okay. So let's just put it in perspective. About a thousandth of a percent of the people that are in top tier, I mean, tier one operators, about a thousandth of a percent of those people will ever actually use a knife in combat in a hand to hand situation. It's very rare. Okay, so let's just dispel all the Rambo stuff and all the cool guy stuff. So there's a very small group of guys that are in that tier of, of operating in, in that kind of hostile environment, and not many of them are ever actually going to go for a knife um, or it, be and find themselves in a situation where they have to use a knife for combat. The days of trench warfare and, you know, bayonet warfare and stuff like that are largely behind us. So that kind of combative use for a field knife, combat knife, utility knife, fighting knife are waning let's put it that way that doesn't mean they're dead they don't mean it never happened again it's just they're not 
in common use today. Okay, just because though, modern warfare doesn't, the, the modern soldier doesn't often find themselves in the position of needing a knife for fighting and combat, doesn't mean that they don't still have a place in the world overall of the knife community, both in the civilian uh, sector as a tactical, field, bushcraft, self-defense type of weapon, or in the military as a combative weapon. So, my iteration, I call the Warbird. I have been working on this design for years. Um, I don't even, I don't even know how many iterations I've gone through. And I've, I've approached it with different philosophies over time, um, and as I've matured as a knife maker, as I've matured as a as someone who services the knife community, I do have a lot of, of my knives in the hands of military people around the world using them in hostile situations. Um, and it's my greatest honor to serve those guys that are still downrange. I narrowed it down though to about a 10 inch overall knife. I find that a knife that is about 10 inches overall is more than enough to get most jobs done that you may need in a combat, hostile, field, or utility situation. Uh, I've gone with thicker steel, 3 16 stock, so you have a nice sturdy spine, you have nice rugged, um, you know, rugged, rugged purchase and, and lots of meat there in your metal to take, take the pain of, of hard use. Tapered spine, all right, so I always taper my tanks. It's nice looking, it helps balance things well, both visually and in weight distribution. Um, Micarta handles, love Micarta. Micarta is a phenolic resin made of layers of linen, canvas, uh, similar paper, similar things, pressed with epoxy resin into sheets. It is dense, it is stable, it is waterproof, it is acid proof for the most part, and it is virtually indestructible so far as elements and weather go. It's not going to shift, move, warp, crack, or break on you. Um, ten in, ten, this one is actually 10.24, so 10 and a quarter inches overall length called the Warbird. I have a smaller version I call the Falcon. It's basically a scaled down version of this at eight and a half inches. Um, it's a little more, the, the, the Falcon, I'll show a picture somewhere. The Falcon is a little more geared towards everyday carry. So it fills that fighter slash combat role, like a self-defense role, but it's a little easier to carry. This, little, this, this guy right here is a little big to be putting in your britches. Um, but on your gear, duty gear on a belt, say you're out hunting, this would actually make a very capable hunting knife for most hunting scenarios. Now it has, you may notice, a clipped Tonto style blade, but it's not a pure Tonto style. It is a Tonto spear point, all right? So it's kind of a hybrid blade. It has the attributes and capabilities of slashing and cutting that a Tonto is really great and famous for, but it's also geared towards thicker spine, distal taper, and a thicker tip for puncturing, stabbing, you know, stabbing into things and jabbing into things. So it's a very strong, um, I think, amalgamation and hybrid design that could have a lot of functional use out there. You'll notice it doesn't have a super deep belly. So if you're getting into skinning game with it and stuff like that, it could work if you need it to, um, but it's not the most perfectly or well designed for that specific use, although it could, it could be used for that. Any knife can be used for just about anything when necessary. But this one's geared more towards combative use, heavy duty use, bushcraft use, um, prying, you know, that kind of thing. It's not a pry bar. I'm gonna caveat that. Knives are not pry bars, but this bad boy right here with the thick stock I went with could actually be used to get in there, crack and, crack and break and open bone and stuff like that. So that's my overall philosophy of de uh, design behind the blade style I went with and the length and size I went with. Now the styling is all mine. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I am 100% inspired by historical fighter aircraft, the Japanese aesthetic. So I tried to meld and blend the two of those. So this is just pure, pure styling um, that I love. It's appealing to me. The, the, the finger grooves here give you good solid purchase on your most, um, uh, your most used leverage points in your hand right here. Plenty of comfortable grip, long enough for back bashing, bashing and smashing and skull crashing on the back end lanyard loop so you can keep from losing your gear in the field. A little bit of retention there. It's elegant, small and slim and lightweight in its overall design, 
but it has enough robustness to it to be something you could put some heavy duty use behind, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in here and show you some close-ups of this knife. This is actually the prototype design, so it's number one of, one of however many I end up making, the first one off the belt. I used W2 steel with a traditional Japanese style hamon, meaning clay quenched spine, hard on the edge, tough on the spine. Makes for a much tougher knife overall. And I have battle tested W2 more than just about any other steel. I've battle tested it in straight razors, everything from straight razors and scalpel blades up to and including swords, which I have some hanging on the wall I've been testing for years. It is absolutely rugged and tough. The one drawback to W2 is it is not a stainless steel, it is a high carbon. What that means for you as the end user, high carbon takes a little wear, uh, um, um, sorry, takes a little more care in the field to keep it from oxidizing. A little bit of light oil and some polish every now and then and you can keep it pretty clean. If you like oxidation or if you like the, the staining that comes along from use, um, then let it, you know, just let it do its thing. It, it'll, it'll start to discolor and stain over time. That's the only drawback to high carbon steels like this. It's very tough. It's a very rugged steel. All right, so this knife is actually available on my website. Please check it out. I will try to leave a link below. I don't know if YouTube will let me do it. It's calebwhiteknives.com or calebwhitestudios.com. Either one you follow them, they go to the same website. My online store is there. Um, and this knife is listed for immediate, ready to go. It comes with a leather sheath, hand fit, hand formed, wet formed, hand stitched with nice positive retention. It's got a little bit of snug to it, so you pop it out, there you go. So, simple belt style, nothing fancy, but uh, a really well-made sheath with, I put rivets in the top and bottom and all the retention points for, for just kind of maximizing toughness for wear. It won't pop out and you won't cut your threads and stuff like that. Full welt in the sheath as well. So, this is the prototype. Um, the blade's a little thicker than I may leave. The edge is a little thicker than I may leave going forward, but I want, I'm kind of still working out this, the grind on this design. I may actually start doing these with a flat grind. I did this one with a hollow grind because W2, you can get away with it. It's a very, very tough steel. And it's thick enough steel that the hollow grind made it feel lighter overall. I may or may not do a flat grind on these. I haven't really decided yet. I kind of prefer hollow grinds. You can still get a nice, tough, blade out of a hollow grind um, and and also have a lighter blade with a little keener of an edge so I just kind of it's my preference and I really haven't come into a situation yet where the hollow grind was a detriment um, or a negative thing in any way in any capacity I actually use it on swords too so this is available on my website let's get in here and get some close-ups um, I'll post them as we go here I've got my logo etched here prototype etched here uh, cool. Oh, the rivets. So, stainless pin, or a stainless lanyard tube in the back. Everything's epoxied, epoxied together. And I used actual Corby bolts for the handle. So it's not just straight through pins, they're actually bolts that are screwed on, epoxied, the whole nine yards. Um, overall, this knife ain't coming apart with anything you do. In the future, I'm going to be offering Kydex sheaths with them, with like Molly gear attachments and stuff, because I do, these are geared towards duty use. You know, this is a duty utility type of knife. I'm also going to be offering them with ulti-clip type of inside the waistband um, retention sheaths, so you can actually put it inside the waistband on the smaller models, on the Falcons. And I, I can do it on this as well if requested, um, so that you could carry it concealed, more or less. Um, horizontal carry, all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of options you can have with the carry on these. So I'm going to offer those through the website if you make a custom order with me. Um, we'll talk about your sheath, what kind of sheath you want, how you want it broken down, what your carry preferences are going to be, and I can custom tailor it to molly gear attachment, um, belt attachment, horizontal, vertical, anything like that. So if you do reach out to me for a model like this, um, make sure you let's just make sure we have that part of the conversation and we'll nail all that down before the order is made. Thank you for joining me again. Thanks for checking out my knives, episode one, Knife Showcase. I'm gonna have more coming up in the near future. I'm gonna start talking about every knife in my catalog and as I develop new knives, as I develop um, new, new models or iterations of models and some of the art knives that I'm working on this year. I have a lot of art knife projects in, in the works. So they're more elaborate like daggers and dama steel knives and stuff like that. So glad to serve you. Thank you for joining me again. Go over to the website, check it out. Caleb White Knives dot com.